So hello, uh, my name is Fardad. I'm a um, second year medical student here at McGill. And I'm here today to interview Dr. Karatsios, an infectious diseases specialist on behalf of MedScale. Uh, so medscale.com, that's for uh, an online platform for the medical community to learn and thrive. Uh, so here we have Dr. Karatsios. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, please? Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Christos Karatsios. I'm a pediatric infectious diseases specialist at the Montreal Children's Hospital, uh, the McGill University Health uh, Care Centre, um, or the Glen site as we call it here in, uh, in Montreal. Okay. Thank you. So before moving to North America and Canada, uh, yes. talking about that, I want to ask um, what, what are these underlying conditions that uh, make someone susceptible? So right. you mentioned smoking and cardiovascular issues, yes. but uh, it seems to be affecting uh, the younger population much less severely at least yes. than the older. So if you could just talk about these conditions. Well, I mean, you know, it's a respiratory virus, right? It, it, most of the time, you know, the coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause a range of simple colds, sore throats, you know, cough, this kind of business, to, you know, severe, severe respiratory disease and, uh, and death. And so I think this one here uh, straddles both sides of that, uh, of that spectrum. And it has to do also with your underlying health and your age. Um, so these underlying conditions, you know, it's quoted in the, you, you hear it quoted in the literature throughout now that, you know, age it's in and of itself is a risk factor, but age plus, you know, hypertension, diabetes, chronic lung disease or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, these kind of things. Um, it makes individuals much more uh, likely to have issues. Hypertension and uh, cardiovascular disease in and of itself has also been shown to be a risk factor. Um, immunosuppressive states, I mean, I, I haven't seen, we don't, I don't think we have that, all that literature, but I'm assuming that somebody who's got zero immune system is at a higher risk than somebody who has a normal immune system. Definitely though, um, Children and younger uh, individuals are not do not get the severe disease that el elderly do. People asked about pregnant women. There's only been a study of nine pregnant women uh, out of China, and they didn't seem to be worse, and they didn't transmit it to their newborns. But again, what's nine, right? The you need you know medical to make proper medical uh, uh, conclusions. You need higher numbers than just because it could just be chance that these nine women didn't didn't give it right and um i'm not sure if this is studied yet but so the antiviral medications that we have tamiflu or whatnot uh, do they right. seem to be any um, effective well, at all yeah the one thing that's effective right now to prevent transmission and i've noticed i've done it three times already is touch your face and uh, <laughs> you try to see there i go again you know it's it always happens whenever you're interviewing and you want to don't want to touch your face that everything starts to itch but i did i did use my sanitizer right before i uh I, so my hands are scrupulously clean right now they have no covid or any other kind of viruses or bacteria perfect thank you so you mentioned for the the next few months to a year or maybe even more, we have to injure what we have right now. So what, um, specifically for medical students, uh, what precautions would you suggest to take during their rotations, uh, whether they are in infectious diseases or otherwise in the hospital? Yeah, so it has to be otherwise because, you know, once you are in infectious diseases, you always have it in the, you know, in your mind and you're always um, more careful uh, about infection control because you you know you got infection on the brain but in reality every doctor out there every medical student every healthcare worker has to be vigilant all the time it's you know universal standard precautions that we have to take washing our hands before going in to see a patient uh, looking up at the the monitor or the the you know the the the, the board the door the you know where it says if there's like a somebody in there with a respiratory illness it says please take droplet you know, droplet contact precautions. So wear a mask with a visor, wear, you know, wash your hands, put gloves, put, put a gown when you go in to, do, to, to see a patient, disinfect your stethoscope, your beepers, your phones, I mean, don't have your phone out, but, you know, disinfect, you know, pens, uh, lanyards, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, after you leave the room, wash your hands again after you leave the room. So, you know, 
it's it's looking out for infection control recommendations. Uh, what can you do? The most important thing is is if you're sick with anything, stay home. Um, you know, quarantine yourself. <laughs> Uh, if you've obviously, you know, once we start seeing more community spread, I think the question of travel to places is going to, you know, become um, irrelevant. Uh, it's already starting to become irrelevant in the United States as we're seeing uh, community spread there. But uh, we're not seeing the expansive community spread in Canada yet. But um, we're going to have to still, you know, if you've traveled, let's say you've traveled, you're just coming back from Italy. Uh, northern Italy and you have a cold or you have you know you start feeling unwell stay home call 811 they will direct you as to where to go there's going to be certain clinics that are going to be um, uh, opened here on the island of Montreal but you know I guess this is uh, nationwide but there's various clinics that the Public Health Agency of Canada or various designated hospitals where they will test you so you know you call ahead you say I'm coming put on a mask, you get tested, you go back home, you quarantine yourself, you get the results within 24 hours and whether or not you can go to work. The other issue is um, what to do about coming back from a hot spot and you are well. Right now, we are starting to quarantine healthcare personnel at home, telling them not to work if they're coming back from hotspots because you could be asymptomatic and still shed the virus, you know, for a few hours before you actually start to become ill. So... You know, as it's as it stands, this is where we are at right now. Once we start seeing more community spread, you know, at that point, what can you do? You know, you you know, unless there is a government-wide quarantine where nobody works, nobody, you know, hospitals have to stay open, so people who are in the hospital might have to be doing extra shifts, extra days. Um, but once it starts being out in the community, if you if you're sick, stay home. Um, Wash your hands. Try not to touch your face. Uh, you know, wearing a personal mask. You know, I see people walking around with N95s and at Walmart, in the airport, and this is ridiculous. Um, you're not. You know, people. First of all, N95s. You have to be fit tested. Not every N95. There's many N95s, and you know, an, an N95 that may fit my my face will not fit your face. So you have to be fit tested for that. Secondly, most people don't know how to don and uh, put and take off uh, personal protective equipment. So they're sitting there. I've seen them, right? They do this. They take the mask. They put it over here. And then now the hand is contaminated, right? But they think, oh, I've got a mask, so I'm going to be fine. So they put it back here, and then they touch their, their eyes by doing this, and now they've contaminated their eyes. Um, you know, or they don't think, they think that they've got the mask, they don't think, so they sit there scratching their eye, or then they walk into their home and they take the mask off like this, they don't wash their hands and they touch their face. Well, that's not going to stop coronavirus. Most important thing is, if you are not sick, um, then wash your hands, and if you do have to come into contact with somebody, you know, uh, two meters uh, and less, then, uh, and if they're coughing or if they're sick, then yes, you have to put on, you know, personal protective equipment. Don't forget to cover your eyes as well with, with glasses, goggles, uh, or a visor and wash it, uh, or, you know, disinfect it. You know, just because you've got glasses doesn't mean you can take them off and leave them on your desk because coronavirus can live on non-porous surfaces for days. So, you know, it's being vigilant and washing your hands is the most important thing and not try not to touch your face. Okay. Thank you. A quick question. Any, yes. any difference between the alcohol hand rub or washing with soap and water? So soap and water and alcohol are equivalent in terms of killing or, or you know, physically taking things off your hands. Um, alcohol, it has the advantage of being easy. Uh, you can, you know, put alcohol in your pocket. Uh, Lysol does the same thing. So if you've got Lysol wipes, you know, it's a little bit more... Um, chemical if you want to think about if you want to talk about that um, but it does kill bleach does kill as well but nobody wants to walk around with bleach because you smell like bleach um, but uh, it's quite as quite effective but the, the personal alcohol stuff or the ones that you see at the hospitals or anywhere you're walking around those are more effective because they don't splash 
Uh, they don't uh, destroy your skin layer the way water does. We all cracked up and bleeding afterwards because you are. Um, people think that alcohol dries your skin. It does, but it evaporates. And then there's also the the, the gel also has aloe vera, whatever that uh, that that is that is better on your skin than soap and water is that macerates your skin and opens up uh, opens up your skin. There I go touching my nose again. Perfect. Thank you.